I have the results for the new bar uh, borrow algorithm, uh, testing it inside of this borrow simulator. I'll explain the dials a little bit. We have the barometer reading. So this isn't the true altitude. This is the reading after it's been delayed a little bit going through the borrow sensor. We have the true actual altitude. Uh, we have the thrust output, which is essentially the power going to the motors. And we have the actual velocity of the craft. I'm only simulating the uh, the up and down z-axis. I'm not uh, simulating any other parts like roll pitch in the craft. Uh, the simulator is just for testing the barometer. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to start throttling way up. I want to bring the craft up to a good even altitude. Then I'm going to turn on the barometer. We see the altitude shooting sky high here and the blue line going up. I'm going to hit the barrel hold right now. We'll see the yellow set mark and it's overshot that. The moment I hit borrow hold is when it's set altitude, so it's going to fall back nicely right down to that desired altitude level. Perfect. We see our actual velocity is now at zero, so it's balancing out with gravity. We see our thrust output is 9.8. This is actually expressed in meters per second squared, which is the same as gravity. Uh, gravity, of course, is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, so this is the thrust output is exactly balancing gravity. And the altitude we see as 131.1, which is pretty damn close to our actual set altitude level. We have the velocity hold here. <coughs> uh, the algorithm used for the altitude hold is not just a position PID loop, but a velocity PID loop. So the uh, position PID loop is wrapping a velocity PID loop. The position uh, PID loop outputs a velocity value, so based on how close the position is to altitude, it will output a desired velocity to get there. Uh, then the velocity loop controls the actual thrust output. So uh, if the velocity output is 5 meters per second squared, then the thrust will go higher and lower uh, until the actual true velocity reaches that desired value. Uh, this is a much better algorithm as the uh, fact that uh, altitude is controlled by thrust in order to go up and gravity in order to go down. So these are two very kind of different forces. They have different speeds and capabilities, different responses. So it's much better to do a velocity speed loop to control thrust and then a position speed loop to control velocity to get to our altitude. So let's change the altitude. Let's go back down to 80 meters. So I hit tab. We see the new set line. The blue line's coming down to match that. It's slowing down just as it hits it. Not even hitting any um, uh, very few or very little shoot through. Very balanced. Our altitude is a nice 79.5 and holding. Let's change the altitude uh, to go up. Let's go up to 250. So we will see the velocity is speeding up to 15 meters per second which is good so it's going at max velocity. Uh, extending up towards our position and it starts slowing down. We see the throttle back off and then come back on again in order to slow down the velocity. There are more heuristics in the velocity loop. For example, knowing that gravity always pushes down and is always constant, the gravity vector is added into the velocity error. That means that it anticipates uh, account that gravity velocity vector and uh, feeds that forward into the air so that on the next iterations it's pushed out a little bit of en uh, motor energy to uh, counteract gravity. This makes the algorithm just a little bit more accurate and stable. Now I want to, let's uh, kick the craft. First we're going to kick the craft down. So when I hit the kick button, the uh, altitude is going to fall rapidly and then it's going to balance back to its desired position. So there's one kick, comes back up, 
hits the level. Let's kick it up. Kick up, falls back down, reaches the nice level. Let's give it a few kicks. And there it is. Reaches its desired altitude again. Throttle balances out nicely. Now I'm going to switch off the borrow hold, which is basically the position loop, but I'm going to keep the velocity loop on. So the borrow is off, but our velocity is still 0 0.4. Uh, what it's set to. So we've got a little tiny bit of velocity, but not much happening. Uh, now I can actually play with this velocity bar. Now instead of tracking altitude, I'm now uh, telling the craft what velocity I want it to go to, and it's going to match that velocity. So I've got minus 5.5 as my desired velocity. We have a velocity of minus 6, so gravity's adding in there a little bit. But we can see we've got a nice uh, smooth altitude drop, very constant, very constant velocity. Now I'm going to go back up to zero, and it will actually essentially hold that altitude, whichever altitude it falls at, because I'm telling it to, to go to a zero velocity. We can go higher, I can max up to 15 meters per second, and it'll match my velocity as I do that. So let's go back, let's fall back to zero. You can see the throttle changing as I'm uh, as I'm changing the velocity until the craft matches that desired velocity and it balances out. The PID settings that I'm using are kind of very arbitrary. They're maybe a little bit tuned, but um, not so sensitive anymore at all. I can uh, change the PID settings quite a bit and it's really not going to make a big difference to the response of the system. I'm going to take velocity hold off now, switch back to normal flight, so I can now uh, change the throttle. So now I have no velocity control, just pure throttle, thrust to throttle, or throttle to thrust. Just almost hit the ground. Bar hold. Let's watch it reach a nice um, altitude level here of 30, 31 meters. Perfect. That's it.